we also heard it in different ways, but I will make it a little bit more clear. One thing is that this is a not, not another skirmish between Israel and, uh, uh, and Hamas. This is, the way I see it, it's a watershed, watershed event. It's a changing. Uh, things are not going to be again as they were in the past. I think also Amos Gilad told you that very clearly. It's not that we are looking for any kind of solution, see local ceasefire like, as we did in the past. It always, it always turned out to be a mistake. Uh, because we, the one thing we have to make sure, as it was said, that the, such barbaric, barbaric acts and vicious attacks against Israeli civilians, this brutality will not be repeated. That's our number one element. The other element, I think that the main failure of Israel, we will go into an investigation of what happened and how it happened and why we didn't have uh, pre-information. But the main concept, I think, that led to all the, the first block of the domino that fell, that created the fall, was the misconcept of it in Israel, ours, many of us, including myself probably, that Hamas is a, is a lead, political leadership that has an interest in the well-being of its own, own population. So I don't think that this is the case. And we thought that, okay, with a dual con uh, uh, containment, one is uh, deterrence on the military side, and the other is improving the, uh, the life of the Palestinians uh, in Gaza. We let many of them come to work in Israel. We let merchandise in. We created, and there was relative prosperity, by the way, in Gaza before the attack. So I think that uh, this was a misconcept because Hamas cares nothing about these elements. Uh, as I like to say, uh, we went to sleep Friday evening with Hamas as a neighbor, and we woke up Saturday morning with ISIS as the neighbor. So it became from a pragmatic so-called terror organization controlling Gaza into a murderous, vicious terror organization that uh, has nothing uh, moderate in its way or, or uh, nothing in its way of thinking that is, is uh, less than extreme. And I think that this, this is a big uh, thing that we learned. Now, as the way I see it, it's a, it's much bigger war. First of all, for Israel, it's, the, it's a war of being able to survive in the Middle East. We live in a very tough neighborhood. In the Middle East, if you are perceived as weak, your life are going to be miserable. If people think that they can uh, attack Israel, we will be attacked all the time. So vulnerability is not much appreciated, and we have to make sure that the people who have bad ideas about us uh, are not able to execute them, and the first one will be Hamas. Uh, uh, but it's very important also beyond Israel. I think this has uh, also a domino, a ripple effect that can go in the Middle East, because if the jihadists around the, the world, especially in Middle East or West Asia, but also in other places in the world, also in South Asia and some places, there are still people who have this ISIS uh, ideology inside, even, uh, uh, even if it was suppressed by the American attacks and everything, so they were dispersed, they were weakened, the ideology is there and some people are there. So if there will be the perception that the jihadists, in this case, Hamas is winning against one of the strongest countries probably in the Middle East, uh, it might fuel unrest in other parts. And this, I think we are, we share the, the wish uh, to prevent it. Uh, the role of Iran, General Gilad spoke about it, the role of Iran behind it. Uh, if we go to Hamas, I, I, you know, we are, we were surprised, it's not a secret, we were surprised by the attack, so now we will go back and look at the planning. But for years, Iran was financing, training, and equipping Hamas for a very long time. So this is no secret, regardless if now we know if they are connected to this operation. But this is, of course, uh, very simple to see that Hamas, that Hezbollah, the proxy of Iran in Lebanon, is immediately coming into action and starting to threaten Israel and harass Israel and create skirmishes on the border with Israel in order to deter us from harming the other way, the other hand or, or organ of, his, of, of uh, Iran, which is uh, Hamas, you see that the Houthis, everyone knows that the Houthis are Ira Iranian uh, 
uh, proxies, the Houthis, started to shoot at Israel. Something I, I saw that Americans intercepted, you know, an American destroyer in the, uh, uh, in the Red Sea, but about 20 UAVs and cruise missiles together. So they activated the Houthis yesterday from Syria, and I wouldn't be surprised if it's Shiite uh, uh, organizations there, another organ of Iran. And it's not a secret because the Iranian foreign minister less than a week ago was in Beirut and had a meeting with uh, Hamas, Hezbollah, and Islamic Jihad, Palestinian Islamic Jihad. So they are coordinating that. Also, the Iranians are threatening. Iran is very much uh, behind it. And uh, it was a question here that it's quite clear that one of the motivations they see, you know, there is the Middle East, uh, the West Asia, is changing in the last three years. From the Abraham Accords, there is a change of concept. When uh, UAE and Bahrain started, and then Morocco later joined, uh, signed peace agreements with Israel. Uh, we were nearing uh, Saudi Arabia. Of course, there was a lot of effort there. We had the I2U2, which involves also India, the economic outcome of the Abraham Accords, you can call it, which is the, uh, the two I's are is India and Israel, the two U's are UAE and the US. And this is a very strong uh, 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 plan. And also, you know, the IMEC, the idea to create a corridor coming from India through Saudi Arabia, Gulf Saudi Arabia, into Jordan and to Israel and to the Mediterranean. So it, it's another path. I think that uh, Iran and others do not like these ideas. You saw that there is also a realignment of the world order. This is another element that we, we see here. So we see uh, that the US and most of the democratic countries in the world are against Hamas. They understand the, the meaning of, the, of uh, Hamas uh, victory or cruelty or which, each one with its own uh, uh, motivation. Uh, and you see other countries in the world that uh, other major powers that were less uh, condemning or even more supportive sometimes of, uh, of Hezbollah. Uh, I would say maybe about the Indian uh, response that was really, first of all, at the official level, Prime Minister Modi ji was among the first uh, leaders in the world to come out with a very clear statement. Already Saturday afternoon, uh, around 4.30, 4.45, I think, his tweet. And this was before we understood the full magnitude of what happened. At that time, we were not even understanding that we are this number. We, we thought we are in the tens, less than 100 uh, victims. We didn't think about 1,400, about more than 220 kidnapped and all that. It was not there even. So uh, he was among the first, and they had another tweet after speaking to Prime Minister Netanyahu a few days later. And I think that, that set a very strong tone of clear condemnation to terrorism. It's important for us for a few reasons. It's important to us, of course, because India is a very close ally. But India is also a very uh, important moral voice in the world. And when it comes to terror, India is also coming from the point of view of someone who knows what they're talking about, being victims for so many years of terrorism. So uh, I think, uh, you know, the, it starts by prime minister, but it goes down to the public, I mean, social media. Uh, of course, there are other voices, especially international voices, a lot of them around the world. But, uh, uh, but the important countries for us are with us. And this, these are the democracies of the world. Uh, I, I think that uh, having said that, uh, and it also in accordance with what Prime Minister uh, uh, Modi say, uh, tweeted, I think that it's also time to officially designate Hamas also in India as a terror organization. Uh, many, many countries have, most of the countries that I mentioned, democracies, the EU, US, Canada, uh, quite many countries, uh, Australia, I believe, uh, already did this, and I think it's good. Uh, from our point of view, I think there are two elements now that are bothering us on the tact more tactical. So, uh, so far, I try to be more strategic. Two, uh, uh, so one uh, designation is tactical, more tactical, but also uh, we have to put a lot of effort on releasing of the uh, of the kidnapped. I mean, the fact that it's against any any law, international law, okay, that's clear. But also uh, decapitating, raping, and, and all the rest, I don't want to go into it, is also against any law. But I think that the international community has to apply pressure on uh, Hamas to uh, to release. Uh, 
uh, the, the hostages. And uh, I think that the second thing is that uh, we have to put pressure on, on Hezbollah. As said here, if we have to open, if the you know, second front will be open, we know how to deal with two fronts, but we don't want to create, we, don't, we know the price for everyone involved, especially for Lebanon, Lebanon and Hezbollah, but also for Israel in uh, having a war in the Northern Front. So I think India has a special interest also because it has a UNIFIL, uh, Indian soldiers in the UNIFIL forces on the border there. So we ask all our friends to make it clear to Lebanon that uh, better, not, uh, better not let Hezbollah run the country into a war with Israel, because at the end of the day, no one will be happy of such a situation. I mean, no one in Lebanon, I can tell you, but also in Israel, we are not looking for any wars. Uh, I think I'll stop here and open it for if you have questions. So uh, there are questions? Wow. <laughs> so. Yeah. Hi, this is Manas from PDI. So as you said that in fact, you also like India to declare uh, Hamas as a terrorist organization. Have you communicated this to any or any government relevant authorities? And second question is that in fact, I mean, we have seen uh, increasing disquiet among the Arab countries about what is going on in Raja and in a number of countries, uh, like you said, somebody said, uh, uh, Turkey has voice concerns and uh, Kuwait has voice, voice concerns. So do you expect this conflict, Hamas-Israel conflict, to translate into a bigger conflict in the Middle East that will uh, drag on for uh, months and years and to have significant consequences uh, for the nation uh, as well as for the world? So uh, do you expect that kind of a situation uh, arising out of the current situation? Yeah, so to the first question, of course, on designation, we spoke to the relevant authorities also here. Uh, it's not the first time we speak about it. I think it's important. We do each other, we understand the problems of terror threats to each other. I think it's a natural thing. It's not, it's not something that we are putting pressure. We are asking because I think it's uh, something that is due uh, because of our shared uh, war and terror and uh, so whether after the, after the, just the, after yeah. the attack you just again uh, raised the issue with the we raised it after the attack and uh, and we are still uh, in dialogue it's okay we are speaking always with india it's a it's a friendly talk it's not uh, we are not having battles on anything we are i think that we see eye to eye on on the vast majority of things in general not uh, of course on ter counter terrorism for sure, but also in other strategic issues. Uh, whether it, you know, it's not a decision of Israel whether it will go to a wider conflict. I can tell you, and as I said before, I think that put aside the, the what we call the Arab street, the, the street, the public opinion, which is there, okay? You cannot ignore it. But if you look at it from the point of view of moderate regimes in the Middle East, at the end of the day, the success of Hamas is not an option for them. They don't want it. What they can say about or can't say, it's their own, uh, you know, running their own foreign policy. And speaking on the moderate countries in, in, in West Asia. So I think that this, the, the need to eradicate Hamas as a threat to Israel and to the region is a must for everyone. So also to the question that was asked to Amos Gilad before General Gilad, I think that long term, okay, there will be now a problem also in the regional uh, uh, regional uh, initiatives of uh, of different kinds, but I think that after that, if we do what we promised to do with Hamas, we will have more support, at least from the point of view of leadership, because we are serving the same and we are fighting the same enemies that they are. So, and as it said about Turkey, it's very unfortunate. There are two countries who are being uh, uh, very supportive in the region. To Hamas, Turkey being lately one of them, uh, Qatar being another one. Al Jazeera is not a is a tool that is poisoning the whole. We're speaking of the so-called Arab street or the voice in the voice of, of the, you can hear. Uh, Al Jazeera has a big role, I think, in creating this environment or poisonous environment that we have today uh, uh, among populations uh, around the world. Please. Yes. I have the. Oh, please. Uh, so my question is: uh, We have these two major projects that have been launched in the last couple of years, I two U two and IMC. Um, with this sort of violence that's right now raging in the East Asian region, in the Middle East, do you think the the prospects of these projects uh, to be successful 
is somehow mm -hmm. clouded right now. And also, I, I answered it just now. Yeah, no, you, you're asking the same questions again. No, uh, my so I, I can repeat the same answer, but I think yeah. it's waste but, of time. Yeah, but I'm just going to ask you again that, so do you think in this state of conflict, Israel's own economic viability is something that you may have to represent and again convince your friends that you know, Israel's economic future looks bright despite all that happening there? Mm -hmm. I, I don't think so. I think that Israel has an amazing uh, past and a better, brighter future. I don't think that it's an issue. Uh, we know, we knew in the past to do, uh, to do our wars and continue growing the economy. We were the most growing economy in the, uh, in the OECD countries, among the developed countries. Uh, we are okay. We, it will take us time now. There will be expenses. There will be, but as we said, you know, the first and essential thing for to for to continue existing in peace in the in our region or in stability in our region is getting uh, rid of the threat. Once we get rid of the threat, we are able to go back to normal. And the Israeli economy is going on, by the way. Uh, people are drafted quite a lot. Uh, university was delayed. The opening of the universities, things are done, but the economy is going on. Don't uh, don't have a mistake. So startups, which is the engine, the high tech. Innovation, the engine of the, the economy is still there. People are continuing. Maybe someone is missing in the in the office, or so two people are missing. It doesn't mean that they stop. It's going on. So I, I wouldn't be, uh, you know, look at the track record of Israel with many skirmishes over the years. We didn't have a decline because of skirmishes. This is bigger, but I think that at the end of the day, the trajectory of growth will continue. Yeah, please. Yeah, yeah, please. Yeah, sir, when it all started, uh, I, uh, Prime Minister Modi, as you rightly said, mentioned and perhaps was the first few leaders to call it a terror attack and there was solidarity and sympathy with the people of Israel. The solidarity is still there, sir, but you know, uh, what we are witnessing as far as the government of India's position is concerned, you know, they have also started talking about more about the humanitarian crisis and, crisis and perhaps uh, the aid was also sent to uh, Palestine, even the Prime Minister Modi spoke to, to Mohammed Abbas also, the head of the state of Palestine. So how do you look at this? And in fact, yesterday also in the United Nations, India has presented both the sides and also reaffirmed the stand of uh, the solution, two-state solution, which is a long-standing position of India. So there has not been a change in position as far as India is concerned in the rest of the world. Do you see that the attack on the hospital was a turning point in this war and perhaps the narrative that Israel was enjoying has gone uh, to the other side. Well, it's a great question. First of all, what we need uh, is to separate between the counter-terrorism, where Israel is very determined, where India is 100%, uh, I think, uh, supporting us in the need of countering Hamas as a terror organization. There is no dispute. There is an, the other side, are the civilians of Gaza, are that are, we spoke of the uh, Israeli 200 and something hostages, but there are many, many more hostages held by, uh, by Hamas in Gaza, and this is uh, uh, Palestinians who live there, and uh, are you know they are between the rock and the hard place in the sense that Hamas is putting them in front of Hamas. When we told us the, the civilians from northern Gaza to evacuate, which by the way is demanded by international law, you have to give people the opportunity to come out of an area that is going to be a battlefield because we are going to go into northern Gaza for sure. We said it. So Hamas were stopping them, threatening them, doing roadblocks, and even probably shooting them. So we know that. We have also uh, evidence for that. It's not uh, something in the air. So they are, in a way, they are caught there, and it's a, it's a big tragedy, and everyone wants to help them and make their lives reasonable. It's not easy. It's not simple. Uh, but we are there. We are sharing the same idea. That's how we are letting some supplies go in. Uh, even supplies, by the way, some of them that uh, by international law, we are not supposed to uh, let, we are allowed not to let in supplies that might you be used against your own civilian population. So everything, anything that is connected to Hamas, and you know what Hamas did, UNRWA itself, the UN agency, tweeted that they, uh, they uh, stole, took from them, stole is a strong word, took 500,000 500, liters of of uh, fuel, and you know why they need the fuel? I mean, the fuel was supposed to go to hospitals for the water desalinization for all these targets. Why did they take them? Because they need them for the rockets and for the tunnels. They pump the air into the tunnels, and this is exactly the problem that there is. The population is hijacked, 
And we cannot make, we have to make sure that things that are coming in are going for the population and cannot be used to further kill our population, shoot at it or do anything of the kind. So it's, it's a big dilemma how you do it in the best way. And it's very, you know, it's very funny, strange, that Israel is making an effort vis-a-vis -vis the population of Gaza and Hamas is on the contrary. They couldn't care less. They steal what is supposed to go to the whole population. At the end of the day, what is the tactic of Hamas? You know, they cannot come and com uh, compete with Israel in the open. In the open, They, go, they cannot go and, and go with the IDF head to head. There is no chance for them. So what do they do? And this is along the years. They uh, immediately tried to put in the front uh, uh, Palestinians to die. So they used to shoot. They still, they shoot the hospital thing that you ask. They shoot from civilian population, especially kindergarten schools, places <coughs> that will create an international outcry. So they will come, the, they take out the victim card immediately. So they are trying to put international pressure on Israel in order to stop. And the way to put international pressure in Israel is to have dead, uh, dead uh, citizens. We do any, the utmost to prevent it, and they do the utmost to, to have it, because it's serving their purpose. It's a problem. Now, uh, again, the hospital, undoubt, the, the, the story of the hospital, undoubtedly, undoubtedly. I mean, there is only uh, evidence to one direction. There is no form of another one. And, and independently, we heard the Americans, the French, I think there was another one, a, a, a secret services that came out, intelligence apparatus that came out and said, yeah, according to our own independent in, uh, information, we understand that it's a misfired rocket. So there was here an attempt, and you know, they also broke the world record in counting bodies. They announced after five minutes, 471 bodies. You, okay, let's go. You see Israel till now with 1,400 bodies. We are still struggling to recognize. And you saw the hit there was not at the magnitude of 400. Okay. It was a relatively burning surface. It, when you see the Israeli bombs, it's very clear. When we go with bombs, you see that the bomb was there. You see a crater. You see there is nothing. There is burned surface uh, signs. That's it. So, you know, you cannot... I will tell you what, how I see the situation of the hospital. After such a, and I'm, you know, the veteran diplomat who is dealing with it all his life. There is a natural turn against Israel in the world, okay, in public opinion in the world. Not in countries, not in leaders, among the, the, the streets, the populace. Uh, uh, and there was a situation where after this horrendous attack that really it's the worst attack, worse than 9-11, in my, in my, also in numbers. You know that the figures, if you calculate, for example, for a country like India, we lost in 12 hours more than two lakh people. That's the number. If you calculate, if you do the difference, of, it's an it's a incredible number for Israel. It, it's really, it's, uh, we don't know even how to, to start absorbing this uh, thing. So the world was a little bit, you know, off taken. Everyone was... Okay, what can I do? I, I, you know, it's something I cannot go against Israel now. And uh, what happened is that they looked for the first opportunity, and this was the hospital, which was a misinformation, disinformation by Hamas. But they took this first uh, opportunity and ran with this opportunity. Uh, all these people, and now they know the facts. So some came out. BBC had a, <coughs> they fixed it in a way. New York Times was a little bit stronger. Each one you know, took back from accusing Israel and not uh, understanding that when Hamas tells you five minutes afterwards was Israel 475 dead, 471 dead, it's probably false. And also, I wouldn't take, someone asked about the numbers of civilians, I wouldn't take uh, any number that the, that the Hamas is giving you or the health authorities in Gaza that are Hamas as a given, as a given uh, fact. So, you know, be very, very vigilant about it. So, Anyhow, the bottom line is that we are back to square one. Those who are against terrorism and see Israel as fighting terrorism are with us. Those who felt uncomfortable are not with us because they were not with us also to start with. And look, I, I said that the thumb rule, I put it on Twitter. You know, when people come and criticize the humanitarian situation in Gaza, do one very simple thing. Scroll down their 
whatever, Twitter, the feed, go down to October 7th. If they, on October 7th or around it, they took an unequivocal, uh, clear condemnation, they bought the moral right to speak now about uh, Hamas and other victims. If they did, and Prime Minister Modi was one of them, I said the same evening, very clear condemnation. If they didn't, they lost it because it's clear to start with, they don't see our date or our barbar this barbaric attack is equal. For them, it's all about their own views about the Palestinians and Israel. <coughs> and Secretary General, it was asked here about his view. And, you know, they said the IDF spokesperson said that it's more fit that the, that the Israeli uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs will answer. I, I will give you an answer also about that. I think that the worst thing that people can do, and I said it from the beginning, before he did it now, this terrible way, there is no justification, there is no background, there is no context for killing 1,400 people in their houses, uh, burning families, cutting limbs, uh, raping, decapitating, whatever. There is no justification. You cannot put it in the context. There is no context for that. Because we are not human. If we put some context to explain why it's justified, because if you say that there is a context, it's justified in a way. It cannot be justified. It will not be justified. And that's why we are furious about all the people who are trying to condemn it, okay, in a way that is giving it the context. In a way, they're supporting terrorism. There is no other way to describe it. If you try to explain the motivation of a serial murder, uh, I think Oha told me today, yeah, he was abused by his uh, parents, okay? And so this ju justifies that he now has to kill 20 people because his parents abused him? This is utter, you know, it's ridiculous, unacceptable, and that's why we were furious. If you have a concept that Hamas is deterred and wants to be responsible and take care of its own population, that was the big misconcept we had. Not understanding that it's an extremist ideology, I just, you must read the covenant of Hamas. They speak of not accepting, destroying, is not accepting Israel and destroying Israel. And they say, you know, from the river to the sea, you know what is the river? To Lebanon is of Hezbollah and Iran. It's not our, it's not our decision. They are, they are in war, by the way, with us. Yeah. But they are in low, low level of war. They are shooting only around the, the borders, uh, rockets and uh, anti-tank anti rockets and things. They are not going deep into Israel. Once they go deep, it's a different game, ball game. So this is this is up to them. And the other question was um, China, China. China. Russia, yeah. I, I didn't see the change of position of China. And again, from day one, I would have appreciated that countries, as I said, on October seven, you condemn terrorism because it's unacceptable this brutality in this kind of terrorism. Then you can start going into sub, sub, being more subtle about your position. Where do you think you can go? But uh, you know, even we are speaking all the time and people are speaking of two-state solution. We are in a situation when Gaza, from 2005, is an independent state, not connected to the Palestinian Authority in any way. Israel left Gaza in 2005. We dismantled, we took out uh, 10,000 Israeli citizens living there. We dismantled the 20 communities there. Uh, and we went out. There is no occupation of Gaza from 2005. What happened afterwards, a year late, two years later, they had elections of the Palestinian for in Gaza. Uh, Hamas won the elections. 2006 it was the elections? Yeah. Seven? Yeah. Yeah. Six. 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 2006 there were elections. And 2007 they kicked out by force a uh, Palestinian authority throwing very famous picture pictures, throwing them from rooftops and everything. So from 2005, Israel is not there. From 2006, but, uh, uh, Hamas is in control. We are not there. We are not, we are not occupying. We don't want anything to do with them. We were trying to engage. We, we don't owe them anything. It's an international border. I can let them, or I cannot let them bring in stuff. They have a border with Egypt. As it seems, someone wrote on the internet very uh, wisely. They said, it's very strange that their rocket supply is never f finishing, but they have a problem of water. They have a problem of oil. It tells you that maybe the priorities how they prepare themselves, what is important for them. And this is part of the, you know, the very unfortunate situation that we deal with.
Joe Biden understood from moment, minute one that it's a different ballgame. <coughs> you know, for the first time, you see the Americans in speed, light, speed of light, not condemning, condemning, of course, sending their fleet uh, to the Eastern Mediterranean, sending a message here to Iran, Hezbollah, don't escalate it. I mean, they did it in a speed. Look, we had from uh, democratic countries, we had a flow of all the leaders coming for uh, solidarity visits uh, into Israel. Biden himself, uh, Blinken, his Secretary of State, uh, uh, German can Chancellor, uh, you know, uh, British Prime Minister, uh, Austrian, Italian, 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 uh, Austrian, yeah. Italian, Australian, uh, foreign. So there was a big, big, big uh, wave of uh, visits. You understand that they get it. They get it that we are, we don't want to be again in this Arab, so-called Arab Spring thing that we had before, that we have to stop it. I think that's very clear. I think that some other countries, they understand they need to fight terrorism, but there are, they have probably more bigger considerations of, of uh, you know, of superpower competition and everything. So the reactions are not only calculated according to what's happening in this Small, small war, small because we are very small, and Gaza is small, it's a small war, but between the forces of light and the forces of darkness. And this is what we have to understand. And I hope that now maybe, and the comments that we made here, that countries are understanding that, yeah, they, they have the geostrategic consideration, big countries, but the real thing on the ground is that they themselves might have repercussions from if we escalate now, if we are not doing what we need to do, uh, there will be also a price for them to pay. I hope that it's a, you know, these changes that you said now about the superpowers in the world, I hope this will also uh, continue in the understanding that we have to be united and eradicate the, the, these uh, jihadists from, from Earth. Fired and one misfired, were shot at Israeli population. No, they, they don't try even to hit Anything that is not civilian population, they're looking for big concentrations, big communities, cities, because they want to kill as many Israelis as they can. We are all the time trying to prevent it, to, to prevent uh, Israeli and Palestinian uh, Palestinians of being harmed. That's the reality of life. I mean, they have the interest in order to have international crime and to stop us uh, by international pressure. This time it's not going to work. We are going to the end because we don't have an alternative. If we want to survive, in our region, we have to take it to the end. We have to finish their capacity to threaten anyone in the world in the near future. But we are doing the maximum to minimize the civilian casualties on the Palestinian side. That's our attempt and a lot of efforts are put into it.